Nothing lasts forever, especially in the world of drug development. Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist and obesity expert. And today we're going to talk about whether Ozempic slash Rogovi is still the king of the hill. Is it still the end all be all when it comes to weight management? Or is there a new medication that is going to come and knock this king off of its hill? But before we dive into that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. I'm on the tick, the talk, the gram, the book, you name it. We are out there and I post content there daily. And of course, if you need some additional support, check out my website, healthcareevolve.ca, and you can book a free consult with myself to see if you'd be a good fit for our program to work with me and my team in helping you with your weight management goals. Now, it seems like just yesterday when Wagovi was approved for weight management, and I mean, in here in Canada, it kind of was just yesterday back in November of 2021. We are just starting 2022, so it really wasn't that long ago that Wagovi officially got the, the indication for weight management. And as a bit of a refresher for you, Wagovi is Ozempic, so they both have the same molecule within them called semaglutide. Ozempic is only indicated for diabetes management, though, up to a maximum dose of one milligram once per week. And Wagovi is indicated for obesity management up to a maximum dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week. And up to this point, Wagovi has been the reigning king on the drug market in terms of weight management. If you recall from some of my previous videos, I reviewed the STEP trials, and what they ultimately found there was that individuals that took Wagovi at a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week, over half of the individuals lost 15% or more of their baseline body weight, and up to one-third of the individuals lost greater than 20% of their baseline body weight. Now, 20% weight loss, that is on the level of what we see with bariatric surgery, let alone a medication, so that's really, really, really cool. But today, we're going to talk about one of the competitor drugs that are potentially going to be coming out in the near future here that might show Ozempic or Wagovi is no longer at the top. So a new medication from the drug company Eli Lilly called Trizepatide will likely be getting FDA approval in 2022 for diabetes management. And shortly thereafter, I suspect they're going to get the approval for obesity management too. And thus far in the clinical trials that have been done, trizepatide has shown some really impressive results. In fact, today we're going to review the results from the SURPASS-2 trial. And in the SURPASS-2 trial, what the investigators actually did is they compared trizepatide to Ozempic in diabetes management. And of course, they looked at weight loss as an additional outcome. But before we dive into that, what exactly is trizepatide? So trizepatide really isn't too different from Ozempic in that it is a GLP-1 receptor agonist, so it binds to the GLP-1 receptors within the human body, but it also has another component to it called GIP, and GIP is another hormone that is naturally produced by the human body, and this is called glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. Did I get that right? Yes, yes, I did. That was a, that was a big, big, big word for a small acronym there. Now, I'm not going to get into the complexities of what GIP does and when it doesn't work because there's a lot of stuff that's going on there and some of it we don't exactly know. But in a lot of ways, it acts similar to GLP-1. It seems to have a synergistic effect when the GLP-1 and the GIP are combined together in not only managing your blood sugar levels, but also it seems to act in similar areas of the brain when it comes to weight management. So it's decreasing that want and drive for food. So in the SURPASS-2 trial, Friaz and friends basically did a randomized, controlled, non-inferiority trial. Now, I won't get into the details around that, but essentially what they wanted to show was that trizepatide was essentially no worse or didn't suck any more than Ozempic. They were basically comparable and maybe try to show that one was superior to the other. And what they did in this trial is they had four groups of individuals. They had three groups that got varying doses of trizepatide, anywhere from 5, 10, and 15 milligrams once a week, compared to Ozempic at a dose of 1 milligram once per week. Now, as you can see from these graphs right here, was that every single dose of trizepatide was more effective than Ozempic 1 milligram in reducing blood sugar levels. And just to give you a few of the finer details here, the average starting A1C was about 8.3%, 
And what trizepatide 15 milligrams once per week ultimately did is it brought that A1C down to about 5.8% on average. And Ozempic one milligram only brought the A1C down to 6.4% on average. And this was over a 40 week period. And what they also found is that the higher the starting A1C, the greater the drop that they ultimately found. Now, what about weight loss? And as you can see from this graph right here is that all three doses of trizepatide blew the Ozempic one milligram dose out of the water in terms of weight loss in this trial. With individuals that were taking the trizepatide 15 milligrams once per week, losing on average about 13.1% of their baseline body weight. I know, that is effing wild. So obviously, trizepatide did not suck compared to Ozempic 1 milligram or semaglutide 1 milligram once per week. And yes, we didn't do the comparison against the Wagovi dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week. And in the Wagovi trials, there was a greater weight loss of 15% to 20% that was ultimately seen. But based on this, if we were to increase the dose of trizepatide, if that can be done safely, trizepatide is obviously probably going to be more effective than Wagovi in lowering weight even further. So obviously, trizepatide at all three doses definitely did not suck compared to Ozempic. In fact, it was more effective than Ozempic one milligram once per week, not only in blood sugar management, but also in weight loss. Now, Ozempic or semaglutide is only approved for diabetes management up to a maximum dose of one milligram once per week. Semaglutide or Wagovi 2.4 milligrams once per week is the dose that we use for obesity management. And that is the dose that we saw that 15% on average reduction in baseline body weight and upwards of 20% of one third of participants from baseline body weight in that group. So the big question is, will trizepatide be studied at a higher dose? Can it be used safely at a higher dose? That's really the big question, because if we can use an increased trizepatide beyond this 15 milligrams once per week, what we're ultimately likely going to see is that it overall is more effective than even Wagovi at 2.4 milligrams once per week. But in this trial here, they only compared it to the semaglutide Wagovi Ozempic dosing of one milligram once per week. And as we speak right now, the weight loss trials are currently underway. So we should likely have this data in the very near future in which it will show whether trizepatide is indeed more effective and whether we can safely use it at a higher dose when compared to Wagovi 2.4 milligrams once per week. But the weight loss trials are currently underway and we should have the data soon to say whether trizepatide is indeed more effective and can be safely used at a higher dose compared to Wagovi. Now, a couple things that I do want to note here and kind of does ring some bells or alarms, if you will, in terms of the safety of this medication is that a lot more individuals in the trizepatide groups did experience more severe or serious adverse events compared to the Ozempic group, as well, almost double the number of individuals on the trizepatide 15 milligrams once per week dropped out of the trial due to the drug side effects compared to the Ozempic one milligram once per week. So overall, the drug definitely seems to have a greater number of side effects, which ultimately happens when we have a drug that is more potent. So it's going to be a matter of, yeah, whether it's going to be safe to increase that dose higher to get more weight loss benefits. That's going to be a real question for the future. So there you have it, folks. Overall, this trial was relatively well done. There was obviously a few flaws, as with any study, but it was a pretty standard randomized controlled non-inferiority trial that really did show some above average results when it came to trizepatide. And I would definitely argue that trizepatide is going to give Ozempic slash Wagovi a pretty good run for its money when it hits the market. And as an FYI, trizepatide is probably going to be the first of many medications within this class that are going to be coming to market here in the very near future. So Ozempic and Wagovi's reign overall is probably coming to an end sooner than later. I will, of course, let you know and provide you the details when those trials come out. And in the meantime, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well. Check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. I'm on the tick, the talk, the book, you name it. We are out there as well. Check out our website, healthcareevolve.ca, where you can book a consult with myself and work with myself and my team if you're a good fit for our program. And as always, you beautiful people, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks. Until next time.